Hey guys, it's Ray from Green Apple Painting and today we are going to turn this room into this room. Now the biggest change that we're going to do today is obviously color and um, the big, you know, wow factor is going to be the chevrons on the wall below the chair rail. So I'm going to get to that right now and we'll get started. I'm starting out by putting my base coat on the walls below the chair rail and I'm eventually I'm going to repaint this baseboard so that's why I'm not taping that off. If you are not going to repaint your baseboard make sure you tape that off really well. And the color that I'm using on the walls below the chair rail is uh, at least the base coat is dovetail which is a Sherwin Williams color. Now that my base coat is completely dry it's time to start the chevrons. Now the way we're going to space these out is we're basically going to go about 12 inches um, wide but the chevron stripes themselves are going to be six inches thick. So what I've done a lot of levels they will have um, the measurements on the side this is a really old one so I don't but what I did was I just took a pencil mark and every six inches I put a line so once I measure out 12 inches across from the corner then I'll simply start I'll put this up make sure it's level and then everywhere I have six inches I'm just going to put a mark and then I'll show you how to tape that later. With your lines and marks now all drawn out the next step is simply to tape off the chevrons. So what I'm going to do since this is my base coat um, it's really simple. You're just going to go to your lines, to your marks, which is every six inches for me, and put your tape on there. I'm going to take a five and one so I kind of get a nice straight line there. And you're just alternating. So obviously, you'll go to the top here, and then to the six inches here. You go to the one that's a little bit higher here, and then go to the one that's a little lower here. Keep track of what part you're painting and what part you're not because a common mistake is so I went there's the mark right there and I went below that so the common mistake would be okay well we'll do that here but then that's gonna mess things up if you you know if you were planning on painting this so since this is gonna remain this color here the darker color that means I want to go above the line on the next one And since this is going to get painted, we'll go below the line. Let me get a larger piece of tape. Below the line. And then above the line. and below the line right like that so you can see I'll paint here this is going to remain the darker color I'll paint here darker color and paint here and that will remain the same color all right I'm going to keep taping and um, as soon as I'm done with that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over all my edges with the base color. So just in case, even though this frog tape, and that's what I'm using frog tape here, uh, even though this does a really great job of sealing the edges, I want to make sure um, that if there's any, you know, little pockets here that paint can get into, I'm going to paint over it with this color so that'll seal up those edges. So I will keep on taping and um, you can watch if you want. All right, the tape is all in place. I have sealed the edges by painting the original color over the top of all these edges. And now I'm just gonna take a whizzy roller and um, paint this second color, which is Dorian Gray. That's a Sherwin-Williams color. And I'm gonna paint that over this and um, see how it looks. After the first coat dries, check to see if it needs another coat. 
And if it doesn't, go ahead and pull the tape. If it needs a second coat, let it dry. But when you pull the tape, make sure that the paint is still wet. Generally, uh, you don't want to pull tape uh, after everything dries because um, there's a better chance of this, you know, kind of sticking to the tape. And then when you pull, you'll have a lot of issues. So whenever you feel this is ready, I'm going to give this two coats. But when yours is, uh, is ready to go, make sure you pull that tape while it's still wet. The last step at this point is to simply double check all of your edges and if you have any pencil marks go ahead and touch those up and then you are done with your chevron stripes. With the chevrons complete it's time to paint the upper walls. If you'd like a complete tutorial on how to paint walls click the link below in the show notes. Alright so I wanted to go over some tricky spots that you're probably going to run into uh, in this case, it's a uh, it's where a door is. Um, you might run into this spot maybe where there's a corner or something like that. For this, obviously, I couldn't go any further and I didn't really, you know, I couldn't put a straight edge and I wasn't sure where this would end up. So all I did was I took, you know, where our line would normally be, where we would make our mark, and I measured from there to the door stop. And in this case, that was four inches. So then I went backwards four inches and found out how far down this stripe would be. In this case, it was two inches. So I simply measured from here to here and then went down two inches and then just took a spit, you know, went six inches from there, six inches from there, from there, from there. And that is how you do those tricky corners. Also, if you're just an inch, you know, maybe a half inch away from, you know, the corner or a door frame, then just go ahead and, um, and take that, that extra inch. Uh, the human eye can catch a lot of things, but it ain't that good. It's not gonna catch that. All right, so that's the finished product. I hope you liked it. I love it. And make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and also visit us at gogreenapple.com. And you can find us on Facebook at Green Apple Painting. So until the next video, hope you loved it, and we'll see you next time.